with us today. We got Dave and Kelly Myers. I grew up uh, in a town called South Fork, Pennsylvania. Uh, not a real big town. Kind of grew up, you know, out in the country. Not really in the town, but uh, got into the Coon Dogs whenever I was, I would say, thirteen. I wanted one, you know, for years up until then, but I wasn't able to get one until I was thirteen. My first one was a blue tick walker mix but he ended up dying at six months old and then i uh the following summer i ended up getting a young tree and walker puppy and trained her up and got her going and stuff and that's the the dog that kind of got me hooked on it um she was just a great dog didn't have any papers on her or anything like that um treated a lot of coons with her had a lot of fun didn't didn't really know anything about the show side of of the whole sport just i just coon hunted a lot by myself i grew up where i grew up at it was a uh not a lot of houses around you know a lot of wood so i was able to just hunt right from the house and so i didn't know anybody and just hunted by myself and then uh i did that for a few years and then later down the road i ended up meeting scott hogan through a mutual friend that we had and Went along with him to our to well to, to my first competition hunt. I just spectated, and from there I just got hooked on it, and <clears throat> ended up buying my first registered dog, which was a black and tan. I actually bought it off of Scott's dad, Jim, and had a lot of fun with him. Okay. That dog's name ended up being Myers Midnight Rhinestone Cowboy, Rhinestone and Cowboy. he was off of. Uh, coon ridge lethal contender and the female was gray's hickory three aces queen who was directly off of cowboy bill and that's where i kind of fell in love with the cowboy bill line of dogs and stuff that goes back to like what bill mack had had worked with way back in the day and um had a lot of fun with him when i got him i had no intentions of ever showing a dog but through Scott and his dad, you know, they kind of showed me a little bit and took me under their wing. And, uh, they said, Oh, he's too nice to not be shown. So I started showing him and I got that bug and got hooked on it. Yeah. Whenever I used to live over there with my parents at the time, I was, let's see, I was 20 years old when I got cowboy, but whenever I would be driving home from work, I'd drive past Jim's house. And usually if he was out, I'd swing in there and stop and talk. We'd have a couple BS sessions and he you know, we'd work dogs. He'd have me go get a different dog out of the kennel and give me tricks and tips on how to set them up. And, you know, I had a, learned a lot from that guy. Um, I uh, got my first shock system with him. I ended up <laughs> dang near ruining the dog with a shocking system and got him recovered from that and um, had some wins on him in the competition hunts. I was still learning the rules and all that stuff, but – Long story short, he ended up, he got killed in a night hunt, got hit by a car. Oh, no. Um, but uh, I was fortunate enough that time I did, I was able to raise a pup off of him. Uh, we had, we had a litter off of him. My dad kept one and I kept two. And the one I kept, the male I kept was named Geronimo and uh, had a lot of fun with him and whatnot. But Cowboy was the dog that got me into it you know into the competition side and hunting and showing i grew up in a town called ligonier pennsylvania um it's about like probably 45 minutes from where dave grew up um but we we didn't know each other we didn't go to the same school or anything like that um but my dad and my mom like they always had coon dogs you know when i was growing up from a little kid uh my dad usually had walker dogs i feel like he dabbled in uh an off-breed dog now and again but um, he did, you know, local competition hunts. My mom had a pretty decent black and tan. Um, her His name was Buck that she used to go to. I feel like, you know, the local shows back then were big, you know, like it was a big yeah. deal though. She was going like every weekend to a show and obviously I would tag along and she would take me and they had, always had a kitty bench show. So, um, you know, I would show Buck in the kitty show or, you know, she did have another female that she got to and I would show and you know, the youth events really weren't what they are today, you know, 20 years ago. They were, uh, I do remember like PA State, you know, we did show and hunt there, but nothing. I mean, I never really had a national level 
level dog until I was, you know, in my twenties. So, um, but yeah, I, I pretty much grew up around coon dogs or some sort of animal, you know, I was in 4-H, so we showed, you know, horses, cows, you know, market animals, things like that. So we we're always doing something with some sort of show animal or, you know, on the farm, you know, my mom had a boarding stable. So that pretty much is what I grew up doing and always had had a coon dog somewhere, whether it was mine or my dad, you know, so but um, I actually went to college to be a horse trainer. So that's what I'm supposed to be in life. But I did not <laughs> grow up to be that she has a few horses over there now just support pasture borders and things like that. But, um, you know, she kind of got out of horses too. And I don't have a horse anymore. We kind of replaced that with dogs. So uh, Dave, I got a question for you. Um, now, when you're judging a dog and you see the dog on the bench and everything, you bring them down. At the end of the day, you've been doing it since 2011, correct? Yes. In 2011, what is the dog that has made the biggest impact in a show to you? To me. Ooh. Mm, that's, a, that's a tough one. I mean. I'm throwing you a curveball. I had to. Oh, there's a. You can pick two or three. I mean, that's fine. I mean, one of the, one of the dogs that comes to mind, I mean, since I've been judging. Yes, sir. And dogs you've picked. Dogs I've picked and. Mr. One of the, one of the dogs that, that, (laughs) that really had opened my eyes to, to seeing a dog really flow on the ground was, um, well, Judge, we have a show here. It's like a state level event. It's called Little Mountain Music. And I mean, back when I first started showing there, they used to get like sixty to seventy dogs in this in this event. Wow. Um they asked me to judge it the one year, and I think I want to say they had in the thirties, you know, maybe forty. But the first time I actually got to judge this dog, uh a little English female, uh, Will's Mountain Blackberry Jam. Uh, it was Autumn Beelan's dog. She was showing the dog. And when I seen that dog, you know, she come in and now we didn't actually have like a actual ring. I gated the dogs out in the grass and then had them put the dogs on the bench from there. But I had a, had an area set up there that I could really examine the dogs. And when I watched that dog move and just how she, how correct that dog flowed. And she ended up being the overall winner that day. And I think later that year, she ended up, she won Autumn Oaks the first time. Yeah. And then she ended up winning the following year. She won Autumn Oaks. Um, I mean, that, that was one of the dogs that opened my eyes. And I mean, she was, she was a correct little female. She was one of the dogs that, you know, when you'd first look at her, she wasn't super flashy. I mean, if that makes any sense, but whenever you actually took a, took a moment and examined the dog and actually seen her for what she was you could really tell that i mean she was she was a tough little unit yeah because i've um, noticed with you when you judge you you're really hands-on you really feel a dog and well, i like that one of the one of the shout outs i have to give is to doc bird so i mean years ago he used to do these not to get off topic or sure, no, go no, on a please. squirrel chase here but please, i love dog. um he he used to do these bench show seminars at black and tan days. And basically a lot of them were on the bench and whatnot. And I learned a lot through that. And back whenever autumn Oaks, or yeah, at autumn Oaks, they used to do the bench show judging seminars and doc was involved with that. And they had another guy say it was Dr. Edwards and Wayne Cavanaugh also was involved in them. Wayne, um, Wayne was amazing too. Yeah. Yeah. There was, I, I took a lot away from them events, you know, and, but, um, but that's, that's kind of like, whenever I'm examining the dog, I'm trying to find, you know, where this point starts, you know, say if I'm feeling for that angle, I'm trying to find like at the top of your scapula, you know, where, where that starts and then down to the point on the shoulder and I'm just feeling everything there and, and just, you know there, there's a lot you can tell i mean there some dogs you can tell without actually putting a hand on them you can you can see a lot of what they are but until you actually get a hand on them and actually feel that's when you know <laughs> yeah yeah that's when you know <laughs> now now miss kelly you've handled dogs pretty much all your life 
correct? Yeah, in some yeah. form or another, some sort of animal, but yeah. So what what would be your biggest piece of advice for an upcoming handler if say a youth starting in the in the show ring? What would be your biggest piece of advice working your way up? Um, well, I would definitely say, you know, watching the other handlers and how they handle their dogs, um, practice. I mean, those dogs, you know, like Dave said it's not a necessity for them to stand still in the show ring, but it definitely makes us, it makes the judge's job easier. Um, and they don't do that by working them once a week for 10 minutes. You know, you have to work your dog. And I think that's like what I learned growing up, you know, not just showing dogs, but showing any animal. Like if you want to win, you have to work your dog, work your animal, know your animal, um, you know, and you're not going to handle every dog the same. So you need to learn your dog, you know, set it up different ways, find out you know what what way setting that dog up makes it look the best because I think you know that's the one thing like we all talk about even in, with ourselves like sometimes like I might set a dog up different than Dave sets a dog up it's the same dog but we can make that dog look completely different based on our own handling techniques so um you know that's one thing like just because you can handle this dog you might get a different dog and it's gonna you know act different but like definitely practice you know, and strive, you know, that's, that's always kind of like one of the things like we take pride in when we show and practice our dogs. It is it's a bench show. You kind of, you know, we grew up watching those statue dogs. So like, that's what I want. I want a dog that stands on that bench and is impressive. And so that's kind of what we, we strive for. So, um, you know, that's what practice. I mean, we work dogs probably every day, you know, it's yeah. some form or another. In one form so. or another, yeah. 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 One form or another. Yeah, because I grew <laughs> up dogs around. Dogs every day. When I, in, in Florida, you know, and in the south down here, I grew up around Johnny Brinkley and Lee Kearns. And yeah. I never forget being a young man, 15, 16 years old, being in the ring with them and hearing them talk to those dogs. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. Hey. And, you know, and you could sit there and you could you could literally feel the feel the tension. And it's like wow the power they're having over their dogs and them dogs didn't budge they were so locked in and and talking to and growing up with folks like that as mentors such as y'all have grown up with doc birdsall and been around birdsall for so many years he's such a good man such a great mentor for the sport i mean it's amazing what we can learn from those type of folks it really Absolutely. is one of the things you have to be willing to do is learn you know like you can't you have to be willing to watch and learn and you know you might not win this show but the next you know there's always another show and you have to you have to be able to you know take a loss and still have that drive to go home and work on what you need to work on and then come back and you know there's always another show to go to so and sometimes taking the loss is hard and mm -hmm. i used to take it really hard i used to take it personal and i was a, <laughs> i was it was just a competitor in me i always wanted to win and uh sometimes it came off wrong and then i learned i was like man this is supposed to be fun yeah this is supposed to be fun if i'm gonna go out here and have fun and do this i gotta have fun and so that's kind of my biggest thing to everyone that's that asked me about showing or anything anymore it's just if you're gonna do it go out there and have fun doing it but make yeah. sure you understand your dog too yep that's, hey, that's really the important. biggest thing yes yeah, absolutely. yeah you have to know your breed standard and know you know if you're not winning you know, you need to evaluate what you have and say, okay, is it, is it at that level? You know, cause you know, we all know that there's different levels of dogs and, you know, there's local level, there's state level, there's national level. So, you know, if you're taking a local level dog to the national level and you're not winning, it's not because, you know, even if that dog's standing like a statue, it just might not meet the breed standard as well as some of the other dogs out there, you know? Exactly. So, I mean, you have yeah. to have that capability and that, um, you know, drive to, to want to, to better, you know, we always joke, if you're, if you're not winning, you might need to get a better dog, you know, you might <laughs> so start looking that's... around. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, now something I find really, really cool about you both is y'all aren't scared to mix it up. Y'all aren't colorblind. <laughs> y'all aren't colorblind <laughs> at all. I've seen y'all show all kinds <laughs> of stuff. Um, but you have done a lot of national level winning with walkers and black and tans strongly um let's talk about some of the walkers you've done a little win with Kelly. yeah so um obviously you know boondocker is probably one of my most accomplished dogs um i was lucky enough to 
to get him as a puppy from Danielle Champ. And uh, he he is obviously taking me places that many people dream about going. You know, he won the world show. He's won several, um, you know, state level events. He was the Purina Walker dog one year. Um, he He's just an amazing dog. He's 10 years old, still out in the kennel. I posted a video of him on Facebook the other day. In my opinion, I feel like he could still compete, you know, a little conditioning, little, little pan on his muzzle. You know, Break out the old man but, one time. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> but he, he's a great dog. I mean, he was always fun to show. He was always one of those dogs that, you know, and some dogs, you know, some dogs are just born with it. Like some dogs just have that attitude where it doesn't matter what day it is. They don't really have an off day. They go in the ring. They, you know, they give you what you practiced at home. Cause you know, we all know that there's those days that dog looks like a million bucks at home. You bring it out and it acts like it's never been on the bench or whatnot. So and what you know, was he's his full, always been, what was his fully registered name? That way folks can look. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Laurel Valley backwoods boondocker. He was a bad boy yeah. folks. He was yeah, a bad boy. So. <laughs> <laughs> but he was one of my most beloved male dogs of all time. I'm being yeah, honest. He's, about that. he's a, Here's good a little, dog. Uh, little tidbit there too, about his name where actually where our kennel name come from. Oh, okay. He was yeah. he was the first dog that carried our kennel name Laurel Valley, and when Kelly and I first got together, the dogs that she had competed with were under the kennel name Laurel Hill, and the dogs that I had competed with they were under Briar Valley. Oh. So when we got together, we combined the names Laurel Valley, and we actually live. Power in couple. Laurel Valley. <laughs> yeah, and we actually live in Laurel Valley. Yeah, so it's it's not yeah. even like we just combine the names. Like the area we live in is Laurel Valley. So. That is too cool. <laughs> Honestly, meant to be. It, it is really, it really meant to is. be. And you know, every time I see you guys, y'all are always smiling. And and it's so <laughs> cool to see that in our sport. It, see, it, you're always a good sport. Kelly, I've showed against you and, and Mr. Dave many times. And I can't remember a single time. There wasn't a handshake or a hug. And yeah. and I want to say personally, thank you for that. That sportsmanship goes a long ways and it's always remembered. Yeah. Um, and it, it just, it really means more than you know. Now, Dave, Dave, what, what kind of got you into the black and tans? Cause you got started early on in the black and tans. Well, like I was saying earlier, my first dog I ever had was, you know, that I actually got to hunt with and tree coons with was a walker, but um, my dad, before I was born, he had a black and tan and, uh, dog ended up, you know, not making it and whatnot. Like it ended up, it died, it died pretty young on him. Um, but he had always said about black and tans and whatnot. And I, I remember finding some of his old full cry magazines around the house up in the attic. They were from 1980 and there was a stud ad in there for a dog called Tennessee Big Will. And I remember seeing a picture of that dog and just falling in love with the looks of that dog. So it just kind of put it into me that I wanted a black and tan. But then I went along with Scott to that first competition hunt. He was handling a walker dog for a friend of ours. Uh, he won the cast and whatnot, but um, there was a couple walker dogs on that cast. And just seeing the way they performed and whatnot, I at that time I wasn't, I wasn't really colorblind or anything of that nature. I, I was had an open mind, but um, I knew I wanted to be competing in some of this stuff. And I was looking for a registered dog. Well, it happened at that time that Scott's dad had a Walker female for sale. And she had a couple wins in the woods and he had won, he had won best of breed with her at Autumn Oaks in the show. But he had a couple cast wins on her stuff and, he was considering selling her and then he had a black and tan. And at the time, I mean, people may not believe us or not, but I was actually <laughs> leaning towards buying the Walker dog. Uh oh. <laughs> and, but then I met up with Scott one night. We went hunting and I just went along, just walking along with them guys. And, and I was talking to him. He said, Well, my dad decided to keep Annie, but he's going to sell Cowboy. When he said about cowboy, I'm th that name just it just struck a chord with me. And we ended up we went hunting that night. We treated coon, we shot it and whatnot. We had it in the back of the truck. We pull in to Scott's dad's house, and that was the first time I ever met Jim. 
and we walked in his basement. He had a, his basement there. He had a couch and stuff set up in there. And he had a, I remember walking in the door and he had all these trophies along the wall and just pictures and all this stuff. And he had some paintings of the dogs and I was just mesmerized. And I started to ask him about, I said, well, Scott said you have this dog for sale and whatnot. And he said, yeah, yeah. And so he had Scott go up to the kennel and bring this dog down. And as soon as Scott walked in that door and I seen that dog, I thought, that's the dog I want. Um, Scott puts a dog up on the bench and he's showing me like, you know, this is, these are the features that this dog has. And, you know, this is what you're looking for. I'm like, I didn't care about any of that. I didn't know what I was looking at at the time. In his gruff <laughs> voice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he, he gave me a couple quick lessons that I, he, you know, he's like poking me in the chest. Like, this is how much force you use when you're doing this. And then, he, you know, he's like squeezing my hand. Like, this is how much force you use when you're doing this. And, you I know, believe like, it. A, like a quick crash course on how to set a dog, so to speak. And, and then anyway, Scott's dad says to him, guys, hey, go bring that coon in you guys shot tonight. And there he goes out, brings this coon in the basement, and that dog just came unglued. And I ended up, I, I told Jim, I said, well, I said, at the time I was making – not a whole lot of money, but I told Jim, I said, well, I get paid, you know, I think it was, I forget what night that was, but anyway, I, I got paid a couple of days after. And I said to him, well, I'll, I'll be by when I get paid, I'll pay for the dog. And he said, okay. And I got home and the next night. It was just burning me up. I called him. I said, Hey, can I just pick that dog up and pay you when I get paid? And ended up went and picked the dog up. He rode in the cab on the way home and, <laughs> and the rest was history. But, um, I he was the dog. I got my very first ever win at a national level. It was 2009 down at Winter Classic. He won uh, Grand Champion Male of Breed, and that was that was when I got hooked from there. You know, it's down in Albany, Georgia. That's a big win in Albany, especially yeah. back then. That was well, and win. I was showing against. Uh, I remember back at that time, uh, Mike Seats was real big with Beaujolais and H. L. Meyer. He had. I remember showing that day against HL, he was showing carbon coffee. And I mean, HL has always been, you know, I've always idolized him. I mean, he's always been a super great guy. And, uh, I didn't want yeah, a piece of him in bike dance. <laughs> the very first autumn Oaks I went to, as a matter of fact, I ended up me and my dad and my cousin, we go out there and it was 2008 and we were staying at the motel there. And I remember one morning getting in the elevator. Well, we went for breakfast the one morning down in the hotel there. And I remember seeing him and Miss Diane there in the in the breakfast area. And I remember just seeing him. I didn't, wouldn't talk to him. I didn't know who you know. I knew who they were, but and uh, made up later on that week. I get in the elevator to go downstairs, and it stops and door opens. Here steps in HL, and he starts talking to me. And I got this dog on the leash, not cowboy at that time. I was holding a dog called Hitman. Now Hitman HL used to own Hitman at one time. And Jim had bought Hitman off of HL. Um, but uh, we start talking, and he he asked me about the dog I showed the day before, Cowboy. And I'm thinking, holy crap, this guy is talking to me, you know, and just <laughs> – and, uh, and then, he, you know, he was trying to buy my dog off of me. I'm thinking, man, I must really have a nice dog and whatnot. But, uh, Especially when still kind of – Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just – it was one of them deals, kind of like a you know unreal moment there, but um, and that'll yeah. stick with you forever, won't it? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Now you've done a lot of winning as well with the black and tans, both of y'all together. Um, y'all have a new dog right now that's really nice. And what what's his name? Y'all just won with him. Uh, we always joke with him, you know, because he's he's the black dog named Blue. <laughs> so oh, we're telling but... somebody. Oh yeah, we got that blue dog. And people are like, "Well, you got a blue tick?" No, he's a black dog, but his name's blue. <laughs> yeah, so he's a black and tan. And uh, tell me, tell me a little bit about his line. Um, well, I mean, Kelly can tell his story, or I can. Yeah, please. <laughs> uh, um, so his registered name is Gilman's Good Time Blues, and um, we got him from David and Gil, David Gilman and Misty Yarrington out in Illinois. Um, he's actually related to, um, Doc, the dog we have at home, you know, Doc Holiday. I love uh, that. he would be his, he's, uh, a nephew. So Charlie, uh, good time. Charlie is Blue's dad and Charlie and Doc are 
uh, not litter mates, but same cross, different litter. So um, he's, you know, he's kind of related to Doc and, um, you know, Doc is, is Dave's dog, obviously. He is Dave's dog <laughs> through and through. And he always jokes like he doesn't have another Doc. So, uh, you know, we've seen Blue since he was a puppy. You know, we're friends with David and Misty and we've seen Blue and we're always like, you know, he's really nice. And we've been pestering them to get Blue for a few years. And finally, they they um decided to give us the opportunity there last year at autumn oaks and we brought blue home and dave actually it was supposed to be dave's dog he went over and got blue and um blue didn't really care for me the first week or so we yeah. had him here at home he he was not a fan and uh i was like oh well good you got your dog because you know he likes you better than me but then you know he got to know us and um uh, he kind of I kind of stole him a little bit you know <laughs> not a little bit you stole him <laughs> yeah I stole him so I mean we he is just again he's one of those dogs that he's pretty correct um you know there's no perfect dog obviously but he's pretty correct and his his biggest you know thing is he loves to show so he gets on that bench and he locks in and that is impressive you know he could, I can set that dog and he doesn't move like that's just what he loves to do even at home and he wants to be on that bench all the time so yeah he's um, for real he's a really fun dog he's a great do- he's fun to show you know when you have a dog like that they're fun because he locks in and he stands and and you know it's just it's fun to show a dog like that well I saw him at the Grand American when I saw him at the Grand American I went whoa <laughs> that was our first Where'd show that together come from? really we never sh- yeah we'd never shown before actually we the, he's kind of the reason we went to grand american we didn't really know if we were going to go it's a it's a far trip and with winter classic just you know on the tails of that so we definitely plan on going to winter classic because of the top 10 um yeah. so grand american was kind of like last minute decision it was mainly because of him he was he was doing better for us we had felt like we had him in pretty good condition for being you know january for us and uh so he's kind of the reason we decided to go and you know, obviously it paid off because he performed great. <laughs> he looked absolutely amazing. Dave, I've got to talk to you and I've got, I got to know about doc. He's been one of my most favorite black and tans of all time. And I want to talk about his, <laughs> where he came from, how you came about doc. And I would like to know his genetics as well. All right. Well, uh, you remember earlier when you asked me about a couple of dogs that have you know stood out to me over, over the last, few years and whatnot since I've been judging. Well, uh, there's another one that I didn't mention, and that would be Doc's dad. Oh. It was Margaritaville, lucky old son, owned by Joe and Deb Powers. And um, he's did a lot of winning in his time. And I remember whenever they first started showing him, he was a registered dog at Black and Tan Days. And I forget how old he was. He was either puppy or junior class. And I was showing a senior male, which was my Ira Hayes dog. I ended up winning best male of show that day. But I, I remember looking at this dog, and he was young, and he just wasn't handling good for Joe. And But I'm looking at this dog, I'm thinking, if they get that dog to stand still and they, he gets it together, look out. And they did, and they ended up – the thing I like about Sonny was that he ended up – he won Autumn Oaks uh, twice. So he won it in 2014 as a young dog. I think he was a three-year-old. And then he won it the second time in 2018. He was an an older dog. So it's just kind of a cool testament to to how durable and how well-built he was, you know, to win it with that time span in between. Right. But um, just that's a little bit of the background on Doc, but I'll get into the whole story on him. But, uh, Oh yeah. Anyway, that's what we want to know. Um, we want to the story. <laughs> <laughs> well, to to take it way back, I went to uh, I was judging a section a lot in Ohio. It was a Stein Memorial for the late Ron Stein, and I went out there and I, you know, we had known Brian and Rachel Weinstock, and they had this young puppy there. His name was Buddy, and he was actually he's actually Doc's brother. And when I seen that dog laying there, and he just looked like a spitting image of my old cowboy dog, his head and just how he was built. And I'm like, man, I need to get a dog like that. Well, there was a fellow there named Brian Hashman. And we were good friends with Brian. He's from down in West Virginia. And he had a female he had gotten in a roundabout way through us. And she was off of Ira Hayes and a female that I had. But um, we were talking to Brian, and Brian 
proceeded to tell me he also had a litter mate too, Buddy. You know, they're both off of Sonny and a female named Wheeler's Cowgirl Amazing Grace. And Grace was a artificial semen pup off of Cowboy Bill. So that's how how he came to, or how she came to be. But anyway, t- through talking to Brian and whatnot, and he was telling me about his pup, but he didn't have him with him that day and whatnot. But um, fast forward a couple weeks to Autumn Oaks that year, and <clears throat> lo and behold, Sonny wins the whole event. He won- that's the first time he won National Grand. And Brian happened to be camping a couple campers back behind us out there that year. And he had said earlier in the week that he was kicking around the idea of selling this dog. And I had seen him the, you know, the first day we got there, he was a young dog. I think he was eight months old and his name was Cowboys custom camo. And he called him Mo. And I kept looking at this dog all week long. And (laughs) we had some events happen there. I was showing Hayes and Hayes was getting up there in years and he was having some health issues and whatnot off and on that week. And, and just, you know, kind of like throughout that week, I'm like, you know, I really don't have anything waiting, you know, no up and coming dogs to compete with and thinking, you know, and now doc had a pretty, pretty hefty price tag on him back then. And I had just went through some life changes there, you know, before Kelly and I, and, uh, so I, I mean, I didn't have a whole lot of money to be dropping on a, on a dog and whatnot. So I, I kept looking at this dog. I'm like, ah, man, I really wanted him. And right after Sonny had won Autumn Oaks that Saturday, we're back to camper and Brian happened to come down by the truck and he's got Doc on the leash. And we're sitting in there, we're talking and I'm just, I keep looking at this dog and I'm looking at him and just, you know, as me and Brian are talking, I'm just, I'm breaking this dog down, you know, just standing there watching them and um, throw we're talking and whatnot. And I didn't buy him that day. And he, yeah, takes he pretty him much back talked him. him. He talked him into keeping the dog, to be honest. Yeah. Like, our, he was like, you'd be crazy ride. to get rid of him. <laughs> He's <Yeah>. really nice. <laughs> our, our whole ride home from out there at Autumn Oaks, we're talking about this dog. I just kept talking about him. Like, so I called him, I think, on Monday or Tuesday. And I call him to set up a time or whatnot to go buy the dog. And he tells me, well, you actually talked me into keeping him. I'm going to hang on to him for a while. Ooh. And I thought, oh, man. Oh, well, there went that opportunity. So he happened to call me on a Friday. And he had said later that week. And he said... Hey, I've been thinking about it. He said, I'm just, I'm not, you know, he was, he was, he was on the fence about staying into the, into the dogs and whatnot and where he was, where he was heading with the dogs and whatnot. And he said, if you still want to buy them, I'll sell them to you. And so I just told him, well, you tell me where to meet you. (laughs) And uh, I actually got a speeding ticket on the way down to pick them up (laughs) and uh, picked them up on a Saturday. Yeah. And the whole time in the back of my mind, you know, because we had talked about Doc and on the way home from Oaks, like Dave said, and he was like saying about buying them. And we had been dating for a couple of years um, at that point. And like the whole time in the back of my mind, I'm like, well, if he gets this dog, I'm probably not getting an engagement ring this year. <laughs> like, that's like in the back of my mind the whole time. Like if he gets this dog, I'm not getting a ring. <laughs> so... But boy, was it worth it, wasn't it? Right. Uh, and, oh my and gosh. I would... I would do it all over again. I mean, <laughs> not only not only for <laughs> for the dog and for for all the wins that we've you know we've got to experience with the dog, but I mean we that dog has created a lot of of lifelong friendships. You know, not I mean just uh, it's almost just like a tree that branches out. Like he, uh, we were we known Joe and Deb, and we talked to them you know off and on at the events and and whatnot and then but once we got doc and we got to know them and and uh well deb kind of like adopts you into the margaritaville clan once you <laughs> once you have a, a pup or a grandpup off of sunny and and uh 
you're adopted then it's, it's almost yeah. it's almost like it's almost like the mafia there's no getting out once you're in. <laughs> tell us but, some uh, about tell me some of uh his accomplishments um well he uh i think here he had his his first big he he picked up a couple you know wins he got a piece of the pie at a couple <laughs> of the events uh grand american first First show I ever showed him at was a Grand American in 2015. Uh, he he won class and breed, come up a little short in the best male show part. I mean, he lost to a nice dog that day. Um, went to Winter Classic that year. Uh, same thing there. Uh, then we went to Virginia State. He That was where he picked up his first best male show was at Virginia State that year. Um, black and tan days rolled around in May and he picked up a, let's see, he was a champion when Sodom Oak rolled around that year and he had won the champion male group and he was in the running for King come up a little short there. I mean, uh, lost to a nice dog there also, um, 2000, you fast forward to two, well, I guess you can go to Autumn Oaks. Uh, he won uh, champion male of breed at Autumn Oaks, and and uh, he got selected to come back off the bench and do another lap around the ring. Uh, he that was kind compete. of a cool year at Autumn Oaks because I remember we were going in the ring. Boone had won champion walker male, and Doc had won champion black and tan male. And, like, same thing, like you were saying, like, dynamic duo. Like, we're standing there getting ready to go in the ring, and Penny Jessup's like, well, you guys are like, this isn't fair because there's two of you guys in here <laughs> <laughs> competing against us. How, how does that so feel? How does that cool. feel as a couple? That was awesome. Like competing yeah, against was. each other is, is definitely fun. Like we all have a good time. Like that was cool to have like at the time, like with Doc and Boone, like we had two dominant males in each of their breeds. So, I mean, it was always kind of funny. We'd always joke like, you know, if Boone won breed and Doc won breed, you know, or Do- Boone lost, Doc would beat the dog to beat Boone, or Boone would beat Vice the dog to beat Doc. Yeah. Like, it was always fun because we felt like we cleaned up each other's, you know, competition. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, it was cool. <laughs> Clear up the slack. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, he was an amazing hound, and I mean, he, the way that dog traveled, he, he moved. He was a beautiful mover, yeah. good sound dog. I mean, just an all-around unbelievable hound. And um, I've never been colorblind, and I've always said in, in, in the history books, that dog better be in them and always will be in them. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> yeah, he, 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 he'd done a lot for me there. I mean, he, uh, he had, he'd won King of Show. That was the first, first time I ever won King of Show at Black and Tan Days was in 2016 with him. And 2016, I always said it was kind of like a magical year with Doc. I mean, he won King of Show, and then – we went to Autumn Oaks. I, I knew he had a good shot. Like I, I just had a feeling that he was, he could be a top contender for national grand. If I got him out to a grand. So, you know, I made the run there, got him finished out for Autumn Oaks that year. And I won national grand black and tan go back in. I come up short in the overall, but then, uh, the judge, uh, it was, uh, Catherine shorter. She selected a female, for overall national grand it was actually jam <laughs> that year yeah um so then i went back in for opposite and wayne Steele was judging he picked off for the opposite sex that day um and then fast forward a couple weeks to the world show and he ended up he pulled off a, a nice opposite sex win at the world that year and then uh, he that carried over to 17 17 he won grand mail down at uh grand american that was a year you ought to remember that year 17 it was pretty special uh, maker's mark <laughs> yep <laughs> i'll never forget it i'll never forget it it was you and the dave in their show yep it was one of the most humbling moments in the world because um dave i've always respected you honestly and well and, it's mutual feeling and, and seeing you in the ring with that dog and i'm saying i got chill bumps right now and i remember i remember doc you know doc was matured well matured and i knew i, I was like i got a nice dog but oh there's doc <laughs> <laughs> and i'll never forget it was the first time i really showed emotion and over a win 
and it, it was over your dog and it was because of how much doc meant to me and it was genuine it was genuine and y'all y'all folks have always been genuine uh and i, I want to say one thing and what what are some what are some mentors out there you would say that some young folks really ought to look up to oh there's there's a lot of them i mean definitely scott and connie i mean they're right in our backyard i mean not to you know use them as mentors and and advice and i mean we we have a litter of pups they come over and take a look at them and give us their opinions you know so we we really look up to them a lot just because they've been doing this a long time and they're really good people and you know we respect them and their wins and what they've done with their dogs and the plot breed so i mean definitely scott and connie for sure yeah scott and connie hogan what they have done with the <clears throat> plot breed is absolutely insane it's insane and yeah. and shout out to wayne Steele as well with the plots i mean yeah. wow Woo. i'd love to have own that one of his but <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's ever gonna happen. <laughs> uh, you know, over the years, there's been a lot of good dogs, and um, I've always said there was. Uh, you remember Queenie? Were y'all around with yeah. Queenie? So oh, Queenie, yeah. Queenie will always go down in the Walker breed as one of my favorites. Doc has always went down in the Walker breed as my favorite male. Boondocker has always been my favorite male, and uh, <laughs> so I was so excited to have y'all on and talk about these dogs and boondocker went on a spree as well uh yeah. let's talk about boondocker spree yeah so i mean we um we had like i said boon and doc for us was like so much fun like i remember the one year um doc had kind of already wrapped up and, and dave can help me on the year i'm pretty sure it was 16 or 17 you talking about the uh, right. race the year i was yeah. on crutches yeah, yeah. so like <laughs> He, um, you know, Doc had pretty much wrapped up the Purina race and we were like, how cool would it be, you know, again, for like you to win black and tan breed and me to win um, Walker breed with Boone. Because at the time, you know, I feel like we look at the Purina race the way it used to be and we look at it in October or right after Oaks and it's like, oh, wow, like maybe we should try to, to run it. And there's only like two months left. So he had knee surgery like the first weekend in October. And we literally went to like a Purina event every single weekend <laughs> with Dave in the back seat with his crutches. And, um, you know, Danielle was running it with Izzy too. So she was trying to win the breed and Boone and Boone and Izzy were tied, you know, they're litter mates. Um, and they were tied. And at that point, basically like if Boone didn't win at one, like one Friday night or one Saturday, you know, she would have won, but he was beating her through the tiebreaker. So we literally had to both win every event and I remember like it was the end of October and New York state was like one of the last events. And it's like, I'm trying to message her and see if she's going up there like Friday and Saturday or just Friday, you know? So it's like, it was fun. Cause like we literally went on like a state tour for two months and Boone and Doc ended up pulling off Purina mail, you know, Purina breed winners that year. So that was cool. Um, but he, he won, he didn't just win grand mail at those <laughs> events. Like he won overall state shows for pretty much, straight for two months so that was kind well, of what's cool. what's funny there too is is it was always boone and izzy at those events it always come yeah. down between there there have been numerous state events that would come down between boone and izzy for overall and you know for you know they would be in competing for the overall and then like the year that boone had won the world it was no less either i mean as he was in there showing and i mean it was those yeah. two for the overall it's like where there was one there was the other yeah. yeah yeah and boone you know he he had been special from the beginning like i remember when we he first turned to junior male and and we were going dave and i had just started dating and it was our first year kind of traveling the circuit together and we went to southeastern walker days and boone had just turned like a year old in january so this was february and he ended up winning overall southeastern and like those will always be some of my favorite pictures because, um, you know, Izzy and Boone, we showed them in pairs and they're just a year old. So, I mean, as many win pictures as Boone has had, like that picture of him and Izzy's pairs is always one of my favorites because, you know, there they are two young dogs and you know, now like what they've won and you see them as like yearlings and like the potential and just the puppy in them is, I don't know. It's like a little overwhelming. Like I, they just, it's just such a good picture of, of all of us together and, and those two dogs and what they go on to win in their young years. You know, it's a, it's just a really, it was a really cool moment to 
not only win the overall, but then to show in pairs with her and, and win that overall pair class and get that picture. Cause you know, those two dogs definitely had to have made history that year where they won the world, you know, with Boone winning overall and her winning opposite absolute litter mates, you know, from the same litter. Um, you know, it was pretty special. That's pretty cool. That's pretty yeah. special. I guarantee it's a record. Yeah. I guarantee it's yeah, a record. Yeah, that was a cool year. Um, I done it. I done it. I didn't win overall. I won overall Walker male and overall Walker female at Tree and Walker yep. World in the 18. They were litter mates? Were they litter, litter mates, mates too? Mates. I thought so, yeah. Litter mates, yeah. I, co- <laughs> I lost Cosmo. Rest in peace, Cosmo. But uh, I still have a yeah. sister. And um, I tell you what, that kind of win. That, it's that, special, yep. Yeah. You never forget it. You'll never forget it. Nope. No, not at all. Um, what I really want yeah. to know is how do you guys how do you guys pick pups? <laughs> Everybody wants uh, to know. This. I don't know. We don't have a good track record of keeping the good ones for ourselves. No, <laughs> I'll tell you, we had a litter la- a couple years ago. Um, Black and Tans, Doc and uh, female um, that was out of a, a lot of hunting line. Um, I don't know. Dave can know her whole name, but her name her name was Galaxy. And she actually, when we took her to the vet, she was x-rayed with 14 to 15 pups. But when she actually finished out, she had 17 puppies. Oh my um, word. Yeah, it was, it was crazy. Luckily, I mean, you know, we lost, some were born, stillborn, but she ended up raising 12 puppies. So we had to pick our keepers from 12 pups and it, and it was rough. I mean, I'll tell you, we did not keep the best pups, you know, we did not. So it's hard, you know, especially I feel like, one of the things I think, and you guys, I mean, you guys breed and you guys keep really nice pups, but I think, you know, one of the biggest things is an outside, when you're raising pups, you get attached to that one puppy, you know, that might not be, and... might not be the best confirmation pup or whatnot. And, um, you know, one of the things we had again was Scott and Connie, since they are so close, they did come over and, you know, look at the litter and we had kind of known our picks. We tried to keep them kind of private from them. Like, you know, so they didn't sway towards what we were thinking we were keeping just to try to get like an outside opinion on somebody that's not around them all the time so they don't know like the favorite one you've held since day one every day um you know so it's hard I mean we do have um I read books you know I have a couple uh you know the puppy puzzle I don't know if you're familiar with that but the puppy yes, puzzle um I we have that video in that book and it just really is good at you know how to evaluate pops and so we do try to to take out that emotion you know, when we are looking at puppies, but, um, you know, sometimes it's hard, you know, you get attached to one or, or whatnot, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's tough. Yeah. <laughs> it, honestly. It's... Yeah. It's tough. It really is. I well, we... think it's easier too, when you're not picking out of your own litter. Like, I feel like we've almost had better luck when we're getting a puppy from somebody, like than when we were picking out of our own sometimes, like, I don't know. It's weird. <laughs> it's hard sometimes. <laughs> it sometimes is. you just get lucky. Uh, I always like seeing them at six months old. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I, mean, I, I have seen, um, there's been three or four times my mom has picked a pup at eight weeks old. And she's always told me, she says, what they are at eight to nine weeks old is what they will be in, at, at a year. And so yep. she says, I promise you. And and that's how she's made her picks is she looks for them pups that looks her in the eyes and they show that they got a lot of sense and they're moving around and friendly. And that's yep. a big deal to us. And I think that's something that you really should pay attention to as well when you're picking yeah, up. Yeah. And pups. honestly, nowadays in the show world, like when it's, you know, because it is more, you know, you can look back through the years and see how it's transitioned from, you know, just a bench show to more gating. And, um, you know, they almost have to walk in with an attitude and personality because if you're coming in and they don't have that, you know, you're not going to get as good of a look under certain judges than you would if, if they had a little bit of their tail up or, you know, acted a little bit more like they were enjoying themselves, you know, than they were forced to be there. So that's definitely, it's not just about confirmation, as you just said, it's about personality as much as, yeah, as much as the confirmation as it is personality. Yeah. I was showing a dog one time at an AKC event, my first AKC event. And he was, he was Cosmo and he's so laid back and the judge, she looked down and she said, is he stoned? (laughs) (laughs) i said no that's just how he is he that's, just... he's just yeah and some of them are like that you know they are they're yeah. just kind of dry but um yeah yeah, yeah he was know. just always very stoic but i, I want to yeah. say a big thank you to you guys i mean thank you so much for coming on and talking with me 
And I hope to bring yeah. you guys on again and learn more yeah. about your breeds. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And Kelly, congratulations on all your winning. <laughs> Thank mean, you. With Boondocker, you really set it on fire. And Dave, what you did uh with doc i i admire i admire well but thank, thank you. you thank you so much anything y'all yeah, would like you. to say no we i just, just appreciate the opportunity i mean it's been great i mean you get your short little you know like i said i was on with ukc earlier and it was, it was nice to get a little bit more talking time and yeah i feel like the more you get to know people that you're showing against you know the better our tune yeah. hound world would be you know i i think that if we all talked and we stopped the freaking jealousy if we just yeah, all talk exactly. and come together and, and we, we can all be friends. It really is that easy. It really yeah. is. But you got to learn that that person may have a better dog than you. Yep. Exactly. Absolutely. And sometimes exactly. accepting that is the hardest thing. Mm -hmm. It is. It. So that, that would be my tip to anybody. If you really want to be like somebody, Kelly and Dave Myers here, I admire these folks. <laughs> I mean, get around them at some shows and you'll learn really what class acts are. And that's what y'all are to me. Well, thank you. We appreciate it. Right. Amen. We well, all have a blessed one. <laughs> y'all like, share, subscribe. Thank you for joining us there at Hunter's Wheelhouse. Y'all have a blessed one. We'll talk so, soon. Like, share, and subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for more content from Hunter's Wheelhouse.